Hello, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Klein, inventor of tumescent local anesthesia. I want to tell you today a little secret about tumescent anesthesia. It's called detumescence. This has not been described very uh, thoroughly in the literature. It's something that uh, everybody, at least the dermatologists who use this technique, know about. Uh, surgeons who don't use uh, tumescent anesthesia totally by local anesthesia, in other words, if they use general anesthesia, are not aware of detumescence. Detumescence is the process by which fluid under the skin, after tumescent local anesthesia, this fluid dissipates. This is the process of fluid dissipation after tumescent local anesthesia. It's important because the forming the, providing enough fluid to create tumescence under the skin, swelling and firmness of the of the tissues because of the large volume of fluid. This large volume is necessary to uh, achieve good vasoconstriction and excellent complete local anesthesia. However, during a surgical procedure it's much more efficient if a lot of this fluid has dissipated. So after we do tumescent infiltration totally for liposuction totally by local anesthesia we wait a number of minutes, usually a half hour to an hour sometimes, for this fluid to dissipate. And the local anesthetic and the vasoconstriction last for eight to 10 hours after the infiltration. But by waiting if these minutes for detumescence to occur, the fluid has uh, largely spread laterally and the tissues, the targeted tissues are less tumescent and we can make this makes the surgery much easier to accomplish for example with the liposuction if we do not wait for detumescence to occur uh, and start liposuction immediately after tumescent infiltration then the majority of the fluid that comes out is slightly blood tinged anesthetic solution and perhaps only 20 percent of the fluid aspirated is fat However, if we're doing an abdomen and we wait for an hour before we start tumescent liposuction, then more like 80% of the fluid that is aspirated is fat. This makes the whole process much more efficient for the patient's point of view and for the ultimate outcome of the surgical procedure. This is uh, the process of detumescence doesn't work efficiently in the setting where a surgeon is using general anesthesia. In other words, after the, in those settings, the surgeon usually has the patient under general anesthesia, does the tumescent infiltration under general anesthesia, and as soon as that's completed, they're ready to start the surgical procedure. They will not wait, uh, the surgeon will not have the patients to wait an hour for detumescence to occur. In order to overcome the problem with excessive tumescent fluid, many surgeons in this situation will infiltrate a suboptimal amount of tumescent anesthesia so that the, it's not truly a tumescent situation. It is a, sort of a super wet technique without good uh, complete tumescence. In this situation, the vasoconstriction is suboptimal. The bleeding during surgery will be uh, more pronounced and the amount of local anesthesia will be suboptimal so that it's, uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy is that the tumescent isn't sufficient so they need general anesthesia. They're using general anesthesia so the tumescence is insufficient and it goes into a circle there. Uh, by using local anesthesia and detumescence we get better tumescent local anesthesia and permits surgeries totally by local anesthesia without any narcotic analgesia, IV sedation, or general anesthesia. Thanks. If you should like some more academic information about tumescent lidocaine anesthesia, go to tumescent.org. If you'd like information about the surgical devices and tumescent infiltration equipment, go to hksurgical.com. Thanks.